And welcome to Portland, the Lakers against the Blazers, Game 3. I'm Rick Barry along with Bill Russell bringing you all the action tonight. The 356th consecutive sellout here at Portland Memorial Coliseum has given these Trailblazers a standing ovation when they were introduced, and they're ready for a victory tonight. Let's take a look quickly at the matchups. It'll be Kurt Rambis, James Worthy, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Byron Scott, Magic Johnson for the Lakers, for the Trailblazers, Kiki Vandeweghe. Kenny Carr, Sam Bowie, Clyde Drexler, and Darnell Valentine for head coach Jack Ramsey. Of course, they're going up against Pat Riley, the winningest percentage in playoff history and regular season history in his brief but brilliant career. And we've seen many games started off exactly that way. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar adding to his already infamous point total. It'll be Portland ball. One thing, Bill, that Jack Ramsey said before the game is they are going to try to go more offensively to Sam Bowie to put a little pressure on Kareem. As you see the officials, Wally Rooney on the left in the middle, Jake O'Donnell, Bill Saar on the right will be the alternate sitting down as Valentine misses from 18 feet. And here come the Lakers. Caught underneath the basket and nowhere to get it to. Bowie with the steal. That's Valentine. We're tied at two. First minute of action has gone by here in Portland. Foul, Rambus over the back. The place is a little, little noisy, Rick. But it, we expect it to be this way for a while. Now, what we're going to see here, the Trailblazers are going to try to force uh, the ball into Bowie to make him make a Kareem play defensive center. Not just defense, but defensive center. Well, that meaning so he doesn't have the freedom to roam around outside. And hits to the top of the key. It'll open up things like that court band away if Kareem is having... Drexler with the block. Worthy gets it back, and Bowie commits the foul. A couple of good defensive sequences here by the Trailblazers. They're starting real high and really into the game. Here's a shot. There's a block. There's goes in there. Now, here's the other block. There's the foul right over the shoulder there. And but the home fans never see that foul, well, no matter what. Credit Kurt Rambis for keeping that ball alive for the Lakers. Now, Rick, you notice the first play uh, down in the offensive end when Bowie took, went strong toward the hoop. Uh, the the Lakers double team knocked the ball away. That would be a good thing, but I do not think they can maintain that for much more than the start of the game. Because I don't think Sam Bowie has acquired the, the NBA arrogance yet to be able to do that over a sustained period of time. They're they're again. Play, but you have to have a, a lot of confidence and arrogance to be able to pull it off. Portland did this in the game Tuesday night. Bowie with another foul reaching in, knocking it away. Two quick fouls on Bowie, and that could change a lot of the strategy on the part of Jack Ramsey. Here's a pass in the foul over the back. Well, I don't really know where the foul was, but anytime you reach over the back, it's certainly you become a suspect without question. Drexler all over Scott, and he still drills it. He's taken off where he left off. 13 to 17 in the game Tuesday night. He had 31 points. Career playoff high. Drexler can't get it to drop. Takes it away from Magic. Bowie takes it home. The Blazers by three. 9.45 goes to go first quarter. Well, Sam did everything he could on that one, but Kareem still came through with his third and fourth points. Cuts it to a one-point laser lead. And the fans love it because Abdul-Jabbar looks like he's picked up his first foul. Boy goes for the jumper here, and there's going to call the foul. Right on the arm. He caught Sam on the arm. Actually, Sam initiated the contact. 30-second. 22nd timeout by the uh, 
Portland. Right. For Portland I think there. Sam got hit in the face. Uh, he's got Ron the best of he Yeah, he's, uh, got, he's bleeding. He's, he's, now what the Lakers are going to have to do is weather this opening storm. If, now if they can stay like they are close through maybe the first 10 minutes, then you have a ball game. Now this Trailblazer team, while they got all this emotion, they're going to have to try to pull away. If they play the first eight minutes in this tied ball game, they got a they got a problem. You see Sam being taken care of, and we'll see if the Lakers can do just what Bill talked about. Reminder at the conclusion of the game, Bill and I will select the Lightyear Most Valuable Player of the Game, and in conjunction with that award, Turner Broadcasting and Lightyear from Miller will present a check for $500 to the National Multiple Sclerosis Foundation, and that player's name is an anxious Pat Riley looking on, hoping not to have to go back to L.A. for a fifth game on Tuesday night. And, of course, Stan Bowie and the Portland Trailblazers hoping to force just that issue. Of course, hoping to go back two and two. They play again Sunday afternoon here. Good defense by Vandaway. Now, yeah, one thing that the Trailblazers are a good defensive team. Rambis ran underneath Bowie that time. The fans wanted a foul. Knocked away by Valentine. And Kareem takes it home on the great Picked second up by, by Great Magic. hustle by Magic Johnson on the floor there. You see the Blazers leading by one. We have 8.50 to go here in the first quarter. Rambis off to Carr miss. Kenny Carr was 8 for 9 in the game Tuesday night. Magic is offline. And away. And the way on the cut, count it. That's what the Lakers have, the Trailblazers have to do. They have to execute the half-court offense and make the Lakers have to play defense. Don't come down and take that first open shot because unless you make, here's a, a good, another good look at that pass in the band away. Well, he beat Worthy and James grabbed them from behind and the continuation rule in the NBA taking effect. Van Way, who's is one of the top free throw shooters in the NBA this year. Completes the play. Three team fouls on the Lakers. The Blazers lead by four. 8.20 to go. First quarter. There's the big height advantage. 6-9 of Magic Johnson over Valentine. That is a real mismatch when uh, Magic takes Valentine into the post. Eight inch differential. 6-1 is Valentine. The first two for Magic. Bowie draws another foul against Kareem, and Kareem is in sense. But that is what he must do. He must challenge Kareem. Ball goes in. Kareem had good reason to argue. He was just standing there, but you see that happen so often as we watch it again from another angle. Right there, he hit him on the arm as Bowie went up in the air. But in, as I said, I say 80% of the time, the defender will get called for that foul. As Bowie gives the Blazers that three-point lead, he made the first one. As you saw him miss the second, 750. And Kareem I think he got a upset. was a little upset because he took that one home with authority with the left hand. Eight points for Abdul-Jabbar. One point, Blazer lead. Now this is where the Blazer should be best. Three with the block. And the rebound off the Drexel miss. A very vociferous crowd here in Portland. As Magic takes it in, count it. They can't let him do that. Now, I think that they made a, might have made a slight miscalculation. And here's Magic going down the middle there. Real control. But the miscalculation was they got Kareem a little steamed up. And that is not what you want to do. You don't want to get the big man upset as Carr. You looked at him, picked up the foul on the block against Magic. Magic completes the three-point play. He's got five points now. And the Lakers have taken the lead, 16 to 14, 7.15 to go, first quarter, Sam Bowie to the bench as Michael Thompson has come in for Portland. 
Lakers have yet to make any substitutions. Offensive foul. Against now, see, Cream, when Cream plays defensive forward, they always double team to help him out. Now, here's a foul right there. Magic Johnson on the good job stepping in to take off the lane away from Thompson. Worthy. He's got three. Lakers by four. 6.35 go first quarter. Lele has run off nine to one to get back into the lead. And away. Little holding and shoving between Carr and Rambis as Jake O'Donnell, the official, warns both of the players now on the court. I think that's a good, uh, excellent move by the referee. You don't want to throw the guys out of a game like this. And if you can avoid it by giving them a warning, or both of them a warning early in the game, and then if they keep continuing, then you throw them out. Rambis is there for the miss, but can't get it to drop. Here comes Portland. Four on two break. Drexler travels. He had Vandaway wide open on the left. Should have given Magic it up. Magic made a couple of good defensive breaks. And he made Drexler think about what he was going to do. 6.03 to go. First quarter, the Blazers lead, are trailing the Lakers by two, 18-16. Rick Barry back with Bill Russell and certainly a different atmosphere here in Portland with the Portland Trailblazer fans getting the Portland Trailblazers pumped up emotionally. Here comes Scott on a good cut through and an easy lay-in. Byron Scott, who was such a thorn in the side of the Trailblazers in game number two with 31 points. He's got four tonight. Vandaway with a super move and a left-hand hook. Vandaway has nine I early think he points. He's trying to take it to the uh, Lakers offensively. They're isolating him so he can play one-on-one -on -one offense. Portland, seven for 13, over 50%. Kareem draws the foul. It's going to be on Valentine, who came in to help out along with Michael Thompson. And I think Kareem has sort of made up his mind to take a couple of good shots. Here comes Valentine on the double There's bill. The foul. He took the, he paid the price. He got a knee from Kareem. That's where he ran into him and banged him. Los Angeles is 8 for 14 for 57% as they continue their exceptionally torrid shooting in the playoffs. Coulter, Steve Coulter into the ball game for Portland along with Jim Paxson. Paxson for Drexler, so a new backcourt for Coach Jack Ramsey. Valentine getting the rest. I see as, uh, as the game progresses, Jack Ramsey likes to use certain guys together because of the way they their, their individual games, how they uh, blend together. Ten points for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. The Lakers lead by four. 5.15 to go first quarter. Coulter had over 20 points in game number one. Only five points in game two. And Carr, who set a playoff record for the Portland Trailblazers, 8 for 9 from the field in Game 2, has already missed a couple of shots in this one. Thompson off the Jabbar miss. Lakers are back well. The Coulter, nice throw. Steve Coulter, the rookie at a new Great shot by James Worthy. And James Worthy comes right back for the Lakers as Bob McAdoo will come into the game. Five points for Worthy. Good ball movement by Portland. That's Michael Thompson. His first two points. And when they move the ball well, they're back on defense, and the break doesn't hurt them as much. That foul will be on... Paxson, who had a mismatch as he was guarding Worthy. His first foul, for 15 foul on the Blazers, penalty. That'll send Worthy to the free throw line. And the atomic dog, Audie Norris, is coming in for Portland. If you had a good look at Jack Ramsey, who's become more conservative in his uh, middle age, not wearing those wild suits and plaid pants. As you also get a good look at Audie Norris, who likes to play a very physical game. 
Worthy now with six points. Back up to a three-point Laker lead. Morris gets his first rebound. 4.05 to go first quarter. The Lakers by three. Remember, Portland stayed close for about 16 minutes in game number two, and the Lakers went on a 21 to 1 blitz. Paxson can't get it to drop, and Norris misses the follow. And Scott just doesn't miss. Six points for Byron Scott. I don't think you'll see very many players playing this time of year with the, the, have the feeling that Byron Scott has offensively now. And Jim Paxson doing what he does best on a good backdoor cut in the pass for Michael Thompson. First that two for Paxson. a beautiful play. He set him up because he's a good outside shooter. He set him up like he's going to the side. A little battling underneath between Scott and Paxson. And Scott has called for an offensive foul off the ball. They're having a few more words. Fisher's quickly in there jumping in it. And we have a timeout as Pat Riley wants to talk things over with the Lakers. The Lakers lead 27 to 24. 327 to go. First quarter. And here you see the guard statistics as the wave rolls here in Portland. Look at what the Lakers have done point-wise. 41 to 20 for the Blazers has been a determining factor in this series. Front, the front line scoring to go with it is LA is so far got 16 in their front line. Portland 18. Portland's got six points off the bench. The Lakers none thus far. Not even close for Paxson. That's magic. McAdoo just hit Paxson as he ran down the court. Cooper who came in scores the layup on the play. It's getting physical out there. First two points for, for Cooper. Five-point lead for the Lakers. We'll keep an eye on that. Paxton got a nice shot from McAdoo on the way down the court. Inside, Cooper will draw the foul as he tries to go off the goal against Vandaway. And now the referees, I think, are starting to call him a little close to make sure he doesn't get out of hand. Fifteen foul on the Lakers. Vandaway to the free throw line. As you mentioned, Kiki, an outstanding free throw shooter in the six playoff games he's shooting 95 percent uh he was 19 for 20 before tonight's ball game he continues his great shooting he's got 10 points so far in this game he's also shooting quite well from the field averaging 24 points a game in the six playoff games he's 62 for 112 55.4 percent so keeping doing what he does best scoring points 11 points for van away three point laker lead 245 to go first quarter Blocks the back of his shot. That's Coulter. And the way's wide open in the right, but Coulter takes the 18 foot on hit. Four points to Coulter. One point Laker lead, 2.20 to go first quarter. They exhibited great patience on the, on the offense that, that well, time. Well, they did what they you said. All the time. Second and third options. They weren't taking that first shot. Thompson with another block, but a foul is being called on Coulter, and Magic Johnson will go to the free throw line. First personal foul on Coulter. Young man did a good job for... Jack Ramsey, the latter part of the season when the Trailblazers came on so strong. Jack decided to go with the experienced Valentine who was injured when Coulter took over for him and played so well. Magic has six points so far in the game. Make it seven in the Lakers. Back up to a three-point lead. 2.05 to go first quarter. A little bit of the trap coming out of the Lakers now. Made legal defensive warning being called against Michael Cooper as Mitch Kupchak will be coming in for Rambis. I'll tell you one thing, we've played almost a whole quarter and there's been no let's see that let's see if we can see where Cooper is. Underneath in the middle. See there he, right. well, he was back in the middle of the three second yes. right now. He's jumped into the three second area and you're not allowed to get in there and stay in there for any length of time if you're not guarding someone. Michael Thompson from 15 feet. One point Laker lead. Four points for Thompson. Oh, 
I think tonight, as opposed to the last game we were with these two teams, the Trailblazers have some I have a little more to say about the pace of this game. Thompson off the McAdoo miss, and McAdoo continues to be cold. He was 0 for 7 in game two. Coulter misses a chance to give Portland the lead. That's Cooper with the rebound. 1-10 to go for the first quarter. Magic travels. I didn't see no step. Well, I guess he did, but that was a heck of a move. Magic saying he grabbed my hand. <laughs> it's hard, he said it's hard to dribble when he grabs my hand. <laughs> Into the final minute, first quarter. Blazers trying to take the lead. And Cooper with the great defense. Foul is going to be on Van the way. Yes. Holding him off as he went for the loose ball. And Michael Cooper showing you why he's been one of the men on the all-defensive first or second team. Let's take a look at it. Now, Michael Cooper knocked the ball loose with his left hand. And there's the foul right there. And why it happened, Bill, is that Kiki was so intent on looking for his teammates, he, he really lost sight of Michael Cooper. And, and another thing, he was, didn't protect the ball from the left hand because most players will play... You feel it protected from the right hand, but Cooper made that steal with his left hand. Mike McGee coming into the game, and James Worthy as Scott and Johnson go to the bench. This has been a very intense first quarter. Michael Cooper will move to the backcourt now with this alignment. It'll be McGee and Cooper in the backcourt. Cup check, Worthy, and McAdoo in the front line for Pat Riley's Los Angeles Lakers. Blazers trailed by seven at the end of the first quarter the other night. Lakers are eight for 12 now from the free throw line. Final 50 seconds coming up here in the first quarter. The Lakers lead by two. Michael Thompson can't get it to drop, and that's Cooper on the rebound. Well, a lot of guys hitting the deck in this game. A little incidental pushing going on as they travel down the floor and clear things out in the middle. McAdoo still cold. Thompson at the rebound. It goes to Paxson. Coulter. Six for Steve Coulter. Final One 15 nice seconds. Shot. We're tied at 32. The Lakers trying to take the lead here at the close of the first quarter. It's been an exciting first quarter. A lot of action. Four seconds. McAdoo, count it, foul, one second to go. Worthy misses the shot. McAdoo gets the offensive board, goes back up. There's the foul. Now, the reason he got it, Bill, is you saw his man, the man that was guarding him, was 43 in your picture, was, was Michael Thompson. Michael Thompson went to look to help out. Didn't watch where McAdoo was, and that enabled McAdoo to knife in and get that rebound. So if Michael Thompson had just screened his man off and stayed with his man on that play, the Lakers would not have this three-point lead right now. So a defensive breakdown cost Portland. They won't even get the shot off. At the end of the first quarter, the Lakers lead by three, 35 to 32. Barry back with Bill Russell getting ready for the start of the second quarter. You see the team statistics, the Lakers and the Blazers, identical shooting percentages of 54%. And the free throws, the Lakers only nine, they were nine for 13, Portland was six for seven. And now on the inside scoring, Bill, in the first quarter, Portland eight for 13 for 62%. The Lakers 11 for two as you see the individual scoring leaders. Outside, Portland five for 11. And the Lakers, two for five. Portland had seven fast breaks for nine points. The Lakers, four for seven. So they've done a very good job here in the first quarter. Let's see if they can keep it up. Carr's back into the game. Drexler's back in. And a turnover quickly. And Coulter comes up with a big steal. Takes it away from McGee. They call a block on Cooper. A 
little late whistle that time, Bill. Jake O'Donnell saw the play, and then he decided what he wanted to do. Here we see it come up now. Cooper's moving. It was an early was a block, and the whistle came now. As you see, everybody look and stop. So it was a little late as Jake O'Donnell had to make up his mind, but it was the right call. Paxson can't get it to drop. Drexler steals it away. Now would have counted had it gone. Foul is on McGee. First foul on Mike. And quickly, two team fouls against the Lakers. You know, two things, Rick. This basketball is, is excellent NBA playoff basketball. It speaks for itself just looking at it. And the one thing that, no matter how hard we work at it, will we ever be able to convey the feeling and excitement of being at an NBA playoff game? I agree, Bill. I it, it's terrific to be there in person watching it and to have been there as a player it's it's a feeling that words really are inadequate to describe michael thompson with good defense and that cut through mcgee scores and mccarine so effective kareem first two points for mcgee he was the leading scorer prior to tuesday night's game in playoffs averaging over 18 a game and then byron scott with his 31 point output took over that position Good defense by McAdoo, but Thompson is there. Second try, no good. Carr, 0 for 3 goes Portland. Here come the Lakers. McGee, four quick points by McGee. There are a lot of guys you're going to shoot that over 15 footer, but he's not one of them. Lakers by five. Portland must be careful right now not to get into a Laker tempo. And two, another missed opportunity. Four layups now that they've missed inside, and the Lakers come back again. This could be so costly. Knocked away by Coulter, but it goes to Cooper with a great left hand. And it's a seven-point Laker lead. Jack Ramsey must be concerned. Shots. They're he, making all the chances, and the trailblazers are missing all theirs. And quickly, Portland calls a timeout at the 9.54 mark. Second quarter, the Lakers have run out quickly to a seven-point lead. Portland trying to do the same thing here. L.A. has just run off 9-2 to two as Portland has gone 0-6 for 6 here in the beginning of the second quarter. And the Lakers, as you see, 3-3. Three for 3. And those opportunities came inside. They just have not gotten the ball to drop. It's for Portland, that is. Jabbar, three fouls. That's what the are trying to do when they get him isolated. They're trying to make him have to play one-on-one -on -one defense and, from the outside. And Bill, the ironic thing about it, I feel, as Kupchak comes in for him, is that in all three tries, he really wasn't moving toward the defensive man, I mean the offensive man. The offensive man was moving into him, and it just shows you visually what it looks like to an official when you initiate contact of an offensive player against a defensive player. But Kareem has come out on the short end three consecutive times. Michael Thompson now with seven points. And it's back to a six-point Los Angeles lead. 9.35 to go here in the half. Magic Johnson still resting on the bench as Kenny Carr knocks it out of bounds. Magic has a cold, and Pat Riley may be giving him a little bit extra rest. He could very well be, a, be fatigued, but it hasn't affected his assist total. He had 18 on Tuesday. He's got six already in this game as he rests next to coach, assistant coach Dave Ball and next to Kareem. McAdoo still missing from the outside, and he got a little closer. That's a good idea. When you miss from one spot, next time, take a little closer. Five points for McAdoo. Back up to an eight-point Laker lead, the biggest of the game. Inside, Thompson counted. Excellent pass by Kenny Carr. Mike McGee with the foul, his second personal. Four team fouls against the Lakers, Bill. None against the Blazers. Let's see if Portland can try and have the free throws work in their advantage this time. They'll be in the penalty from this point forward, and they have four fouls to use against the Lakers. Oh, 
Worthy. That's a great move by James Worthy there. Eight points for Worthy. His first two in this quarter. As Coulter, nice through again. And the fifth day up for the trailblazers refuses to fall. Magic is going to be back in momentarily. It's going to be a foul. No basket before he put it on the floor. Kiki Vandeweghe with the foul, pushing. He's such a Kiki. combination of speed and power that it's very difficult for any one type of guy to guard him. Because if you put a big guy on him, he goes around, and you put a, a fast guy on him, he goes over. A nice problem to have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you're James Worthy, of course, and there's Magic. Who came in for McAdoo? So Cooper goes back to a forward position. Small lineup in the ball game for the Lakers now. Where they right over Vandeweghe? That's Ten what I mean. Points. You just overpower him. Because you put a, a bigger guy on him, then he goes around. He goes outside. Well, where these six nine? Vandeweghe only six eight. <laughs> What's that? Just two little guys. Vandeweghe's only six eight. <laughs> He doesn't have the vertical lift That's true. that uh, Worthy has. This is true. How's that? He does not elevate to quite the same level as Mitch Kupchak picks up the foul. And now the penalty working for the Trailblazers. Michael Thompson will try to convert. Riley talks things over with Kupchak. Excellent game off the bench and replaces Sam Bowie, who picked up two quick fouls. 7.50 to go in the half, and Worthy is hot. James Worthy now with 12 points, six in this quarter, nine-point Laker lead. And Jack Ramsey has decided to take a timeout with 7.41 to go. The Blazers trail the Lakers by nine. Back into the ball game for the Trailblazers. Valentine and Carr, Valentine and Drexler in the backcourt. Carr and Vandeweghe in the front. That's Valentine from 17. Four points for Darnell Valentine. Seven point Laker lead. Inside go the Lakers as Cooper that scores. That is such a tremendous pass that it's it looked too easy. Magic makes a lot of things look easy as the Lakers are now 7-for-7 seven seven on their inside. They have taken over the inside game and it shows on the scoreboard as Carr misses inside. Portland 1-for-9 only on their inside attempts. That's Jerry West looking on who will be with us uh, at the end of the halftime. Kareem only needs 240 some odd points, I think, to pass Jerry West as the all-time leader in playoff history in the NBA. So Portland's inside game has gone kaput. They're one for nine on inside chances. Have missed six layups at least. Make it another inside shot. And a foul is going to be inside against the Lakers. So the free throw line keeping Portland relatively close as Scott comes in from McGee. Three fouls on Cooper. I noticed both coaches are using different substitution patterns than they did the previous game that we did. In what way, Bill? What? Well, you try to build up a sequence so the players know when they're going to play and pretty much so that they, they don't have to start something new. You know, you if, you, if you're the seventh man, you're going to come in at, uh, with eight minutes to go, you can get yourself ready and be ready to do that. In this particular situation, during the playoffs, you find the coaches change their substitution pattern to accomplish certain things. Hustle by Drexler. We're going to have a jump ball. And Portland not only missing their inside shots, now missing from the free throw line as well. Portland's had five offensive rebounds in this game. Now here's the hustle the on the floor there. There they go. Portland five offensive rebounds, no points. The Lakers have had five offensive rebounds as well and have scored seven points. Another inside chance missed by Portland. Foul, Valentine against Magic. 
That'll be the second team foul against the Blazers. Uh, here goes Magic here. And I think there's no question as to the foul committed by Valentine, who now back to live action is on Magic Johnson. McAdoo came in for Cooper, trying to post up on Vandaway, and he does it successfully. It's almost like the Lakers have decided whoever Vandaway is going to guard, they're going to take him down and play the low post with him. The Lakers up by 11. They have not been as explosive as in previous games, but they keep chipping away now, and they've got it up to an 11-point lead. Now they miss from the outside. That was Vandaway who missed. Kupchak had the rebound. Knocked away by Bowie, but Kupchak saves it. Magic to who else? To Byron, Byron Scott. Scott. Three-pointer. Count it. Three-pointer. He led the lead this year in three-point accuracy. It was two for two Tuesday night. Now He's I think one the, here. The Blazers are going to have to regroup this quarter. They can't let this continue. Sam Bowie, offensive foul as he backed into Kupchak. Who hits now, I know the you can't believe that all the pushing and shielding been going on. And, they, and then all of a sudden, you're the guy they call. That really can, can bother you. Here's Bowie giving a push here. And Kupchak giving an act. Well, when you're from Hollywood, you learn to do that. <laughs> At least you should. <laughs> a lot of good features down there. 13 to 4, L.A. run. The biggest lead of the game is they lead by 14. That's three seconds inside on Kupchak now. That's because McAdoo gave one or two too many fakes. Because you got to, when you're the offensive board, you got to be able to anticipate when the shot's going to be taken, and you have to be in the paint. Remember, at halftime, it'll be Gary Miller with Mike Fratello, the coach of the Hawks, as his guest at halftime. We'll have an update on the Charles Barkley injury that took place in the first game of this doubleheader, won by Philly, 109 to 104 over Milwaukee. Valentine can't get it to drop. Here come the Lakers, three on one break. Drexler comes back. Had a call, step to that ball traveling on Worthy. He caught it. Let's take another look at that. One, two, three. Yes. Only one. You're not allowed that extra one, James. <laughs> but he caught it with the wrong stride. It's really it's a strange thing. But if you can catch it with, with your wrong foot forward, and it doesn't work for you. That's the illegal defense. defense. That'll be a technical this time. And a technical foul will be assessed to the Los Angeles Lakers. This is Pat Riley. Question zip, but not too. Uh, when they call a technical foul like this, who has to pay the fine? That's a good question. I want the Laker Ball Club, I guess. Certainly not Pat. They call on the coach. They call on the team. So Jerry Buss, Jerry Buss has to play. Back in the middle. Now let's see who's doing the illegal defense. It's probably on the weak side. They're in the middle. Byron Scott, who snuck in there. You see Byron Scott oh, right in there. Low culprit was way over there, guarding no one. Good replay. Make sure everybody Pope. stole the paint. Turnover. No Drexler hustles to get it back and keep it alive. Vandaway just inside the three-point range. 14 for Kiki. Magic got lucky that time. Cup check from the baseline. Magic went in there, got caught in the air. They got a lot of guys to put that thing in the, in the basket for the Lakers. Seven guys averaging double figures as Paxson finds the hole. Four for Paxson. 11-point lead for the Los Angeles Lakers. 4.13 to go. 22nd timeout being taken by Pat Riley and the Lakers. Okay, Bill, what's important now for Portland to try and do? Try and get it back under that 10 mark at least by hit half? I think it's very important for them psychologically to have a single-digit deficit going into halftime. You see how well they've done here at home, Portland. Well, that... Uh, may not be of much assistance to him tonight why because of this man and what he's done with this ball club they're playing so well since february 1st i think they're 34 35 and 4. there are only two or three ball clubs playing right now and all of them are playing right now that if they're the shooting percentages but the trailblazers playing the way they play at night they would be ahead of most teams the regular teams in the league by at least 10 15 points they are playing quite well and los angeles just been superior this is a a, a great basketball been played tonight. I'm just enjoying it a lot. The Lakers are 36 and 4 since February the 1st. 
inside again. Worthy gets down. Paxton almost throws it away and gets a second chance to do it. Cup check again from the baseline. This time the opposite side. He's got four. Lakers are back up by 13. And Jim Paxton, you can't make the kind of passes the two he just tried. When you're down by 11 points, Bill, you don't need to try and force it inside. You've got to be make, make the sure pass. And there's another tough pass that Bowie tried to throw as... He, they missed the easy ones open. on that, or those open. They missed the easy ones, and they, they, they've tried the tough ones, and they've come up short. We saw the shot of Bowie and Kupchak there. The L.A. bench is shooting 10 for 14 for 72 percent. So they have come through admirably for Pat Riley. Oh, wide open underneath Scott. Oh, and he gets to play well. He was wide open. I thought they were going to call three seconds. He was so open for so long. Byron Scott now has 11 points. The Lakers by 15, and they've done it methodically. They haven't had one of those 21 to 1 outbursts. They inside again goes Portland. Four and players on the floor. Looks like a bowling alley. <laughs> and some big pins hitting the deck. Here you see two guys battle down on the deck, and then Bowie goes up and he'll hit the deck as will Cup check when he comes down on top of the rest of the pile. The domino effect. Unfortunately, no turned ankles or twisted knees here, as you see it from the low angle. Boy, I tell you, that's all it takes to is to come down on the side of somebody's foot or ankle and turn yours over, and you could be out for a week the or two. The rest of the playoffs. That's what happened to me in my second year. Bowie continues to have difficulty at that free throw line. Sam Bowie in this game 250 to go in the half the Lakers leading by 15 McAdoo now starting to warm up from long distance he's got nine foul inside Magic Johnson Thompson will go to the line as Carr comes into the ball game Remember, the Lakers have won every playoff game they've played thus far by a minimum of 16 points. And they have led, in all games prior to Tuesday night, they had led by 19 or more at the half. Uh, they could make this uh, a very exceptionally long evening for the Trailblazers. Yes, and I tell you, they're shooting a phenomenal percentage in this quarter. They haven't been as spectacular, as we mentioned, with those 21-1 to -1 spurts with dunks down the other end of the breaks, but they have just, just come right at Portland, come at them, come at them. They're 14 of 16 from the field in this quarter for 88%. If that will get you the lead, you got a real problem. Boy, do you ever... <laughs> That's the case, it's time to just say, hey, listen, fellas, this one's yours. And the free throws again, playing the Portland Trailblazers. Says Thompson can't get that one to drop in. Big 16-point Laker lead. 2.20 to go here in the first half. Good defense by Michael Thompson. Last touch by Carr. It'll be Laker ball. Magic Johnson is up to 13 assists now, Bill. Drexler, good rebound. Four on two break. Thompson. 15 for Michael Thompson. 14 point Laker lead. Final two minutes, as you see on the clock. Byron Scott off the double screen. Drexler with a great block. And McAdoo is there. You can't give the Lakers three tries. 11 points for McAdoo. He averaged 18 points a game in 20, about 24 minutes a game against the Phoenix Suns in the first round. And the way he takes it home. Portland finds Excellent it. pass by Drexler again. He, he plays very consistently, very well for the Trailblazers. Done it all year. Vandaway has 16. Six. 
from the two times he swung down that play. And McAdoo calls it in. Drexler called for goaltending as he tipped it out of the basket. 13 points now for McAdoo as he's starting to warm up. You won't have Bob McAdoo shoot 0 for 7 two games in a row, I can tell you that for sure. I haven't played against him. He's the leading active play. Well, let's see, fourth on the all-time uh, active list for shooting, uh, scoring points in playoffs, I believe. We've got Gary Miller along with Mike Fratello, the coach of the Hawks. Uh, hope to have an update for you on the Charles Barkley injury that took place at the end of that game, won by Philadelphia. And all the other sports news. Final 35 seconds, first half. Magic Johnson, Magic with nine points, his first two points in the second quarter. Remember, he's got 13 assists. Drexler, offensive foul. You could see that coming, that he was going to take that shot. Uh, you could see that in the backcourt, that he was going to take that shot. And Magic Johnson knew it as well, and Magic draws another offensive foul. And Magic saw it coming, kept his position. Because I think Drex was a little bit. frustrated, I, uh, more than any of the other trailblazers. I, I can see where he's being affected by the fact that they're uh, in a sort of a hurt locker. Drumming by 16, the Lakers playing for the final shot as the clock ticks down. 15 seconds to go in the half. 70 to 54, the Lakers in control again. Magic kind of fade away. 11 points for Magic. Final seven seconds. It's an 18-point Laker lead, and the crowd beginning to murmur here in Portland. Three-pointer, Paxson foul. He'll go to the free throw line after the buzzers. Where they hit him. Paxton will have two free throws to finish off the half. That was not a good foul. A chance to at least cut it back to a 16-point lead only for the Los Angeles Lakers. But, but, it, but a guy's hustling, you gotta, you can't say it, really get, get down on him. Well, Pat Riley doesn't look like he's uh, overjoyed by the way his team has played. I'm sure that inside he has to feel very good as Paxton makes the crawls it in there. Paxton with five points. Ramsey, I don't know what Jack Ramsey with good doctor is going to come up with, but it needs to be something very, very important if he's going to get this team to turn around because they lead, they trail the Lakers by 16 points, and they've been in that position for two consecutive games. We'll be back with halftime action in just a moment. Listen, anyway, you've done a great job with this ball club. Jerry, why are they playing so well? well? Rick, I think it's a combination of things. Number one, we haven't had any changes over last year. I think our younger players are much better. And our bench people have a a an added year of experience. And uh, also, I think our coaching staff has really done a terrific job with this team. Well, I agree with you there. And I have to ask you about one player in particular. Bill and I both feel that the emergence of Byron Scott has really been something. You were, of course, involved in that controversial trade. How do you people feel about it at this stage? Well, you know, I think it's most important to ask your coaches. And I think they're delighted with the trade. Uh, he gives us a tremendous outside threat. And you really have to stay with him all the time. He opens up our inside game an awful lot. Now, I think the area where he's underrated is defensively, which, which we really feel that that's a big difference in our team over last year. Okay, how about James Worthy? I kind of feel that James Worthy came into his own. Even though you lost that series against Boston, I think he became a player in that series. How do you feel about that? Rick, I, I agree. Uh, you know, when you're playing against uh, Kevin McHale and Larry Bird, uh, to me, they're two of the top ten players in the whole, uh, all of basketball, and he held his own there. And I, I think it was, a, it was great for uh, basically a young player uh, to go into a situation like that and play as well against those two great people as he did. Okay, Jerry, not to look past this Portland series, you seem to be handling things well. If you had to play against either Utah or Denver, who would you prefer the team to play against? Rick, I really don't think it makes any difference this time of year because I think any team, if you're not ready, is capable of playing you. Uh, and I believe this team will rise to the challenge, whoever they might play. But again, we've got to win two, uh, this game and another game up here. But we have played a very good first half. Okay, one last question. As far as this ball club, the way they're playing now, are they as good as the team that you played on the 133 straight? What do you think? Rick, uh, I'm very prejudiced. <laughs> Both of them, are, I think, are different teams in different eras, and, and I don't like to compare teams at all, but I think this team is one of the most fun teams I've ever watched play. I don't know if they can win uh, what everyone always covets, a world championship, but they really are fun to watch play, and it's, and it's, a, it's a pleasure for, really for me to be part of it. Well, thanks a lot, Jerry, and continued success to you and the Lakers, and uh, this fellow will always be a, a great fan of mine. i tell you that. I know I'm a fan of yours, I should say, because I admired him for so many years. One of the greatest, Jerry West, still on the all-time team. And we'll be back with more halftime activities in just a moment.
Portland Trailblazers shot an atrocious 7 for 20 for 35 percent. The Lakers 77 percent for on 18 for 23. And you see the resulting statistics here at the half. The Lakers 66 percent. The Blazers 45. And it has just been that type of a game. 21 assists. Magic Johnson with 15 assists. And he set a playoff record. McAdoo was the leading scorer with 13 points. That's a playoff record for Magic with 15 assists in the first half. And here's McAdoo on his way to his 13 points in the first half. The inside scoring, the Lakers were 11 for 14 for 79%, up from 55 in the first half. Portland only 4 for 14 inside. And quickly we start off as Drexler gets an inside basket on the good pass from Vandeweghe. So Portland with 29% inside shooting down from 62 in the first quarter. And that has led to the big deficit now at 14 points. I'll set the starting lineups for you. Uh, for the Lakers, the same starting lineup that they had in the first quarter as Jabbar comes up short. Michael Thompson in for Bowie for the Trailblazers. And Coulter also as Fandaway gets two more points. Kiki now with 18. Now the Lakers only have to be careful. But the Trailblazers have to be really careful. Traveling against Worthy. There's the Portland scoring at the half. Vandeweghe and Michael Thompson leading the way. And Thompson coming off the bench again for Bowie, who had foul difficulty. And he has started the second half now. That is Michael Thompson who's setting that screen. Drexler doesn't use it. And Drexler had no points in the first half. That is such a surprise. The worst performance for him offensively thus far in the playoffs. Look at the good ball movement. Scott gets wide open. And one of the rare misses for Byron Scott. And Colco can't save it. They get a 24, but they got good hustle. They're working real hard, and they have to to start this third quarter. When you're behind, this is just so essential that you get up to a good start the third quarter. You don't give Byron Scott too many opportunities open. He now has tied McAdoo for high scoring honors for L.A. with 13. Magic off the miss from Kiki. Blazers back well. Worthy can't handle it. You know, the irony, Bill, of being behind by that many points at the half is Portland had 11 more free throw opportunities and 7 more points from the free throw line than the Lakers and still trailed by that many points. So you know that they were in some serious shooting difficulties. We're inside of 10 minutes to go, third quarter. And the reason, you see, touch that the reason you see a lot of substitution pattern changes is in the playoffs, you got to play one quarter at a time. And you find that certain, certain teams give you the, the kind of things that it takes to keep you in the ball game. Of course, as you can hear by the moan, the call went against the Trailblazers. Thompson with the foul, reaching in, trying to knock the ball out of Abdul-Jabbar's hands. Well, the guard position is still has been a big differential in favor of the Los Angeles Lakers. They're 15 for 19 for 31 points, 9 for 23 for Portland for 18 points, as you can see there. Rambus knocked Vandeweghe down and got the rebound, no foul. Johnson with a super pass and great defense by Drexler. Great Rambis. block by Drexler. Quarter, 20 for the game. Good yeah, defensive play and end up getting the assist. One thing better than that would be getting a dunk. Carr and the Jabbar miss. He pushed off with the left arm for the rebound. It'll be against Kenny Carr. In second for the See that little fellow there with the glasses? That's behind the man with the green shirt. He's mosey on up to Portland from L.A., Jack Nicholson. Some guys will do anything to get on camera. Kareem off the miss by Magic. You mean sitting in front of Jack Nicholson? 12 points for Kareem. 14-point Laker lead, 8.45 to go, third quarter. 
Lakers start their dual trapping. And they didn't rotate quick enough as Coulter hits the open 18-footer. He's got eight points. And I think what the Lakers have decided to do defensively is to try to make Vanderway have to give the ball up and double team him and make someone else do this, make someone else beat him. Another Laker turnover. That's ten for the Lakers. Drexler counted. Hi, Drexler finally gets on the board as he cuts it to a 10-point Laker lead at the 8-17 mark of the third quarter. A chance to get it back into the single digits that Bill talked about. One thing about these Portland fans as Byron Scott draws his second foul is that they haven't given up. Nor have the Trailblazers for that matter. There goes Clyde right through the middle. Good left-handed shot. Drexler has five now. And Worthy takes Carr to school. See that's quickness on the guy that he can't ju necessarily jump over really easy. And he's now the leading scorer for the Lakers with 14 points. Foul, Worthy. Second team foul against the Lakers. Both teams are using a lot of hands. Uh, defensively tonight, both teams are. It's a very physical game in that his hands, but... Uh, not the real bruising kind of physical thing. If you saw a third personal foul against James Worthy. Coulter and the Laker defense. A little slow closing off the middle from the weak side. Portland has run off 15 to 6 to get back into it. Rambus. First now, two points for Rambus. And somebody just threw James Worthy out of that pile there. I didn't see who it was. Michael Thompson. Drexler almost with a super play. Gets it back on his knees to Vandaway who takes it home. First two points on second opportunities for the Portland Trailblazers. They trail by nine. Rambis. Good give and go by Rambis and Magic Johnson. Now here's Drexler with his hustle on this play as Michael Thompson misses. Drexler tries to come up with a great dunk. Now it's knocked away from Magic. He comes by up with it. Worthy. All right, right back to Vandaway who takes it home. We've got a timeout with 6.51 to go here in the third quarter. The Lakers lead by 11. Back to live action here in the third quarter as you see the field goal percentages for both ball clubs. Portland finally coming alive after that disastrous second quarter. Up at the 70% mark. And Vanderway with an off-balance shot. Tiki with 24 points. 9-point Laker lead. 6.20 to go in the third quarter. Portland desperately trying to make a game of it. Drexler from the weak side. Knocked away by Magic. Rambus to Worthy. Big play by Magic Johnson because Portland had a fast break and probably could have got an easy layup down the other end. So instead of a seven-point lead, it's back up to an 11-point lead for the Lakers. Worthy has 16 points. There's the illegal defense against the Lakers again. This time it's against Magic Johnson, so another technical foul assist. Well, who are you going to throw the team out of the game now? Two teams and you're out. That's, the, that's what the hope Portland Trailblazers can probably hope for, Bill. Very good. Now watch Magic right there coming into the middle of the picture. There he is, staying in that three-second area. And the call was zone for him, but I don't think so. He was really making his effort to try and get back out. I have to disagree with that call. He was fighting off a double screen and trying to get back out to his man. And the technical free throw was no good. Portland wishing they could do better from the free throw line. Drexler again on the offensive glass as Carr battles with Rambis and knocks him to the ground under the basket. Drexler with seven points. I remember was held scoreless in the first half. He's come to life with seven quick points here in the third quarter. Wide open, Scott. Here comes Carr. Carr 
Cuts it to a seven-point Laker lead. 5.05 to go third quarter. Back come the Lakers. Taken away by Drexler. No foul call. Technical foul is going to be on Drexler for throwing it in the air. No. No, he they don't. Jake O'Donnell stood there and with his started. hand in the air in between the two, getting ready to close him up for the technical. And one of the trailblazers, Kenny Carr, came over to him and said, no, no, and Jake didn't call it. Because Clyde had thrown the ball about 30 feet in the air after that foul was called. Well, that, that's when you call flirting with disaster. Boy, that's for sure. They tried 75 bucks in Portland, possibly a, a point. We'll see if it becomes pivotal. Count it worthy against Carr. 18 for Worthy. As I talked with Jerry at half. You know, Worthy seems to be one of the players. This is a great move here. Soft touch and everything. Even if he missed that, it's a good off one for offensive rebounding. He seems to play better on the road than he does in L.A. Well, as you mentioned to Jory at halftime, I'm talking to West. The Worthy has got such confidence in himself now. He doesn't worry about anything. He shoots that jump shot, drives to the basket like you just saw. He's working hard in the defense. Lakers start with the trap. Illegal defense Illegal this defense time again. Pat Riley now is unhappy. Magic Johnson again. Byron trying to figure out what they can do to not have that happen again. Pat's still talking to the officials. See if Kiki can hit this one. To me, Bill, those are the toughest ones to shoot. What's that? When you got technical fouls to shoot the technicals. And Pat Riley wants a timeout. 4.37 to go. The Blazers 78. The Lakers 87. Third quarter. Join us for that action and join the Braves tomorrow. But right now, we've got a good ball game is turning out to be here as you look at the field goal percentage. Thompson, block is going to be called against Rambis. And Portland starting to come alive from the field after that 30% quarter shooting in the second period. Two fouls on Rambis. Rambis moved in, as you can see. You have to be stationary before the man commits himself to the drive, which doesn't necessarily mean that he has to be in the air. If he's picked up his trailing foot, at least in talking with Darrell Barrett, the head of the official, the offensive man is then committed, and the defender must have position. As you can plainly see, Rambus was moving on that play. Michael Thompson now has got 16 points. His first points here in the third quarter. Eight-point lead for the Lakers. This match, Carr has got Jabbar. Worthy continues to light it up. 21 points for James Worthy. He had a quiet 21 in the game Tuesday night. Carl blocked. And Wexler from Rambis as he went up for the offensive rebound. Now they could have called goaltending Bill uh, offensive because Carr grabbed the rim on his in his attempt, let's see if we can spot it. Now watch him grab the rim. You see him there? And that could have been goaltending, and the ball could have gone to the Lakers. Yes. And Drexler draws the foul against Rambus. McAdoo is coming into the ballgame for Kurt Rambus for the Lakers. McAdoo, remember, was the leading scorer at the half with 13 points. But since that time, James Worthy has come alive with nine points here in the third quarter. He has 21. Drexler has come alive also, having been shut out in the first half. He has nine here in the third. Eight rebounds also to go along with that. Five on the offensive end. That's going to be a foul on Thompson as Kareem will go to the free throw line. You know, to me it's interesting that Clyde Drexler and James Worthy have two of the toughest defensive jobs of any of the two guys out there right now. Uh, Worthy is guarding Bandaway and Drexler is guarding Magic Johnson. And uh, uh, Sasha doing a good job defensively. They're uh, lighting up with scoreboard. Now, you know, I want to say something. As an offensive player, when I played before, you know, you are really known for our defense, of course. But I think that when I was out there working real hard, playing a tough player, it helped me get into the rhythm and the flow of the game. And I actually played some of my better games doing that because you're active on both ends and you're able to make that transition move from one side to the other just as well. Of course, you don't want to have to play 45 minutes doing that. Scott got a hand on that Drexler shot, and it'll be Laker ball. Kareem has scored only three points for the Lakers since the first quarter. Another assist for Magic. Up, up. 
And here comes Worthy and Vandewey matching up again. Magic is up to the 20 assist mark already. As Coulter drops another one in, he's got 12 points. And both nine point lead. Staying with the same lineup for pretty, pretty a long time. Three minutes to go, third quarter. Good defense by Portland. Shot clock is at seven. It's at four. Defensive goal heading, I mean, against Kenny Carr. Basket to Magic Johnson. Magic now has 13 points to go along with those 20 assists. I think we've got a few people here interested in this game. <laughs> look at that synchronization. Boy, they really look like the Rockettes. Coulter, three-pointer. Count it! Coulter with 15 points. Back to an 8-point Laker lead. 2-10 to go. Stolen by Vandeley. Drexler. He's got 11 in this quarter, and it's a 6-point lead. The Lakers timeout. All right, Bill, what do you do with your Pat Riley right now? For the first time in the second half, a team is in contention. Well, uh... What you want to do now is just hold the fort. Because this is a team that's not going to give up, obviously. And so now you got to execute your half-foot offense and tighten up a little bit on your defense. Cooper into the game for the Lakers. Paxson is in for Trailblazers. Knocked away. Kenny Carr, very unhappy. He thought that he made a good defensive play. As you see the fast breaks in the third quarter, Portland with a big advantage, of course, with eight points. The Lakers, very unusual. They have yet to get the fast break on track here, and that's one of the reasons Portland is flying back to within six. Early now with 22 points. Carr with four personal fouls. Both teams in the penalty. 152 to go. Third quarter, Lakers up by eight. Worthy has 11 points in this quarter. Kareem with the block on Michael Thompson. To Cooper. Four on three break. Cooper to Worthy. Great penetration. They, didn't, they never stopped the ball. Took advantage of it. Always to get a nice dunk shot for Worthy. 25 for Worthy. Quickly gets back to a 10 point Laker lead. 1.20 to go. Third quarter. Paxson, goaltending, Worthy. Basket for Jim Paxson. Eight for Paxson. Well, I don't know. It looked like it might have still been on the way up to me, Bill, but uh, we're back live. Our, our producer says it was pinned against the board as Vandeweghe picks up the foul. I don't think there was a pin on that particular play, actually. Well, Rick, but then again, really, that's what, what are my 2010 eyes going to say to his 1040s? <laughs> Let's see if there is indeed a pin. Boom. Okay, see, right now it's off of his hands. And he hit it into the board. He hit it, he hit it against the boards. Okay, he says he's goaltending, gentlemen, so it's okay. The official agrees with him. That's all that really matters. We'll give it to you, Glenn. Rick, you're generous to a fault. Is that the San Andreas or which one? The San Andreas goal or? And Portland cannot afford that turnover. They're trailing by 10. They had cut it to six, remember. Kareem finally draws a foul as Norris, who just came into the ball game. Picks up the foul. Second foul on Norris. And it seems that whenever he's around, and there's a couple of other jerseys there, that his number gets called more <laughs> often than not. The atomic dog, as Pat Riley, concerned, looks on. Now, what Portland has put out there is a team that has good firepower, 
but is reasonably physical. This is not a uh, real finesse play team, and they're, they're passing the ball around, but they're not really executing the offense that well. They're playing well, but a lot of it is freelance. 12 point lead for the Lakers for all the hooting and hollering has ceased here, at least momentarily, and that'll help to quiet it down even more. 30 seconds to go here in the third quarter. It was a 16 point lead at the half for L.A. Scott takes it away from Norris. Final 17 seconds. The Lakers will play for the last shot. They have a chance to only have been outscored by perhaps uh, two points. Well, Cooper's going to go to the line. Paxson commits the foul. And indeed, if he makes these free throws, the Lakers will have only been outscored by two points in this quarter. After That's got to be a little discouraging because the Trailblazers came out and actually played great third quarter. And well, we most of the third quarter. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, you have to play all of it in this game. Cooper has got eight points as Kupchak comes in for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Cooper had his uh, 1985 playoff high of 16 points on seven great field goals along with eight rebounds, which tied his career high on Tuesday along with five assists. Well, you know, if you, when, Matt, when Cooper and Matt Jackson both are playing well, the statistics don't even give it a clue of what they're doing. Well, they do so much on both ends as L.A. has run off 10 to 2. Final second. Count it by Coulter. End of the third quarter, the Lakers 104, the Blazers 92. There's the man, Pat Riley, who has done such a marvelous job with this Laker ball club. And even though he probably will not get Coach of the Year honors, he deserves a great deal of credit for the job that he has done as you see the scoring by quarters. And Bill, just an interesting thing, in the last minutes of the first three quarters, shows you how L.A. has played well in the playoffs. They have outscored Portland 4-2, to 4-2, to and 6-2 to for a 14-6 to advantage. And uh, that could be very critical in playoff competition to play well, as the Lakers well know and last you year against finish, the Celtics. You gotta be able to finish the game, finish it off. On, on the inside baskets, as you look at Jack Ramsey, LA was 9 for 17 inside. Portland 10 for 13 in that quarter, Bill. But they still were not able to really cut into that deficit except by four points, as you see, points off of the offensive boards. Very important. 12 minutes coming up for the Portland Trailblazers. They can ill afford to fall behind three games to nothing for these Lakers as Bowie has come back in along with Valentine for Portland. Norris off the miss by Kupchuk. Paxson. Paxson with 10. It's almost like uh, Jack Ramsey's using two different platoons. Drexler with on Worthy and McAdoo gets the offensive rebound and draws the foul. That's Sam Bowie who picks up his fourth personal foul. Didn't waste much time getting that one. Spent that third period on the bench. Now we'll see if uh, Jack Ramsey used uh, uh, almost a different team in the third quarter. Let's see how long he'll be. Will he have decided on which will be his team to go down the stretch? That'd be an interesting look. McAdoo now has 18, 19 points. Lakers shot are shooting 61% in the game, Bell. Thank you. Foul spotted by Jake O'Donnell on Cooper. Mike McGee is in for James Worthy. Now if they called it on Kupchak pushing off, not on Cooper. His third, first team foul here in the fourth quarter. draws the foul as he penetrates up the middle. Now they're going to McAdoo. Uh, 
as we pointed out in the first half, especially in the second period, actually, when Portland got to the free-throw line so frequently in the third period, the Lakers scored ten points from the free-throw line, and Portland only five. Paxson now with 12 points. Cuts it back to a 10-point Laker lead. Now, I think that putting uh, Drexler on uh, Magic has been really relatively effective. Paxson with the steal. In that he hasn't made a, a criminal great pass that he normally makes. Paxson loses it, but Bowie's there. Three-pointer, Drexler. That was McGee with the rebound. That shot would have been terrific had it gone in, but Portland, as you said, Bill, didn't wait for that second and third opportunity, didn't force the Lakers to play that extra few seconds of defense, and cut Good Jack inside. Magic again. Perfect pass. That's the only time would get through. Another assist for Magic. Now the Trailblazers have to be careful. That last shot that uh, Dressler took was not the kind of shot you want to take under these circumstances. Fouls on McAdoo. Here's... Drexler going in, and there's a foul right there. Now, on second opportunities, Bill, the Lakers have been dominating this game. They have scored 21 points on second chances to only six for Portland, and, and right there is a the big difference in this ball game. Magic Johnson has 21 assists, and of course he set the record for assists in the playoff game with 24. And in the championship series last year he had 21, which was a record. Blocked by Bowie on the Cooper shot. That's Valentine. Drexler. 14 for Drexler, who remember was shut out in the first half. It's a nine-point lead for the Lakers. 9.35 to go here in the ball game. Portland not about to give up. Three-second violation against Mike McGee. The 13 turnover turn for the Lakers. Important two points here. Make it 14 turnovers. Pat Riley starting to chew that gum with a lot more intent. Yelling out defensive instructions to his ball club. Shot clock inside of 10 for Portland. Quickly, Cooper to McGee, who's, who's off. Now that's what really hurts. You, you're working and you end up, you miss a shot, and it's, so, it is gone. And that was not Valentine's fault. He took the shot. His man took off down the court. It was the job and the responsibility of another Portland Trailblazer to pick up McGee, who was streaking down the court. Back to an 11-point lead. Yeah. Bowie draws a foul inside. It's those little breakdowns, Bill, that we've been pointing out that have been so costly to Portland against a great team like the Lakers. You can ill afford to have that happen as we watch Bowie again. Now, that's what you call a muscle move. What he does is he initiates the contact. He's under the basket. You jump back up into the defensive player. And as we've seen happen in the first half, Kareem had three fouls called against him on similar type of plays, except not under the basket, where the defender initiated the contact, or the offensive player initiated the contact. Bowie finally makes a free throw after missing five straight. Kareem is back in. Well, you know, he starts, Sam Bowie started out pretty strong, and he got busted pretty good in the mouth. And uh, they had to take him to the dressing room, and uh, he hasn't really been a, a very effective since then. You can see the blood stains on his jersey. Drexler hustles it down. Three-pointer, Drexler. So two ill-advised three-point shots by Clyde Drexler. At least I feel that it's ill-advised. I think you agree with me, Bill, that they should work the ball for a better opportunity than that. They're still right in this ball game. They're down by 10 with 8.30 to go. Cooper almost with a spectacular shot. Kareem has it stolen by Valentine. Four on two break for the Portland. Bowie takes it home from Drexler. Eight to Sam. 22nd timeout taken by the Lakers. 
Okay, Bill, now we've seen this happen. Portland cut it down to six. Pat Riley called a timeout. His team went back up by 12 at the end of the quarter. Now Portland's cut it to eight. And what do you do if you're Pat Riley now as you uh, look at that with only four NBA teams coming back to win after losing the first two games? What do you do now if you're Pat Riley? Whatever he told them last time, obviously it worked quite well. It won't work this time. It won't work this time? You think Portland's going to uh, chip well, away? Well, no, I think they're, they're going to continue to run at him. And they, they, they may catch him. But what he's going to tell him now is just take your time. We're going to work the ball into the sky hook and make them have to work because you got some good outside shooters. And now you got a pretty good rebound team with McAdoo and Worthy in there. Okay, well, and Magic Johnson. Kareem has not been a big factor since he scored 10 early points in the game. He only has five since early in the first quarter. Good ball movement by the Lakers. Shot clock going down inside of 10. Loses it out of bounds, and they play quick defense, get the Lakers to miss an opportunity shot, and lose the rebound. And the referee is going to get that fan out of there, and he's correct. He's, yes, and the police will take him out. Fast breaks the second half. Portland 7 for 12. L.A. with only 3 for 4 points. So Portland's done a good job of containing the Laker fast break here in the second half. But they still trail by 8. 7.35 to go. We, we got, got a foul. foul on Bowie. And Bowie, his fifth. And they push each other around pretty good in there. It's the second team foul against the Blazers. The Lakers have four, so Portland can take advantage of the Lakers by trying to go inside and get to the free throw line as Michael Thompson will be coming back in. Bowie battling again with Kareem. McAdoo on the cut through, draws the foul against Norris. Now, Bill, we talked about, as you see, three fouls on Norris. The guard shooting, L.A. Got 18 baskets out of their guards, but they're 18 for 26. Portland has finally started to improve. They're 18 for 36 for 50 percent. They're 11 for 15. They were 11 for 15 in the third quarter, and that helped Portland to make a little run at the Lakers. Also into the game for Portland, Kenny Carr coming in for Morris. Now the the, lake, the ball has been out late in the court much too long for the Trailblazers. Good since they called that timeout. Back up to a 10-point lead for the Lakers. McAdoo has 21 points. We have a foul. No, we have a cup. Some debris thrown on the court that Jake O'Donnell didn't want a player to step on and get injured. 7-14 to go in this ball game. 10-point Laker lead. They led by 16 at the half. Lasers cut it back to six, only to have the Lakers go back out in front. Cuts it back to single-digit deficit of eight. Now, this is where I like to play in these games, Rick. This part of the game where it's... The alley-oop to McAdoo. And the fans can't believe it. Again, we see the same type of foul. Carr was standing with his arms in the air. The offensive man jumped into him, and he got called for the foul. There's a timeout on the court. 6.48 to go in the ball game. The Lakers 112, the Blazers 104. When we had gone away, Kenny Carr picked up a technical foul for complaining, and as Bill said, and... What's that? The Kenny Carr's technical for complaining, I said. Yes. Uh, and what? And you said, and complaining? And, and complaining, complaining? And, and complaining. complaining. <laughs> and to shoot and it, you got to you a real complaint. Well, it didn't hurt. Except the pop of it. 
Now McAdoo to the free throw line. As he'll shoot the free throws for... That's the same foul we called on Baker. So, uh... Both teams now with four fouls. They'll be in the penalty from this point forward. Carr has five personal fouls. Bowie's also playing with five fouls, but he's not in the game at this point. Byron Scott came in during that timeout for the Lakers. They lead by ten, as you can see. 6.45 to go in the game. Portland making one last ditch effort here to try and get back in the win column in this series. Good pass to Thompson, but McAdoo with a great defensive effort saved by Kareem. And the Lakers continue to come up with the big plays, both defensively and offensively, as Kareem had something to say to one of the fans running back down the court. It's rare to see Kareem respond to a, a fan. Traveling. Well, with 6.16 to go, Lakers have only scored two field goals so far in this quarter. They've gotten that free throw line to help maintain that lead. If you're playing a tough defense, uh, you don't really have to score a lot of points. You almost drug it pin that back foot there. Here's the Laker trap. Good ball movement as Drexler gets an open eight-footer. Good rebound by Byron Scott. And the Trailblazers, again, ineffective in getting those open shots to drop for them. They had that problem in period two to fall behind by 16 at the half after playing the Lakers relatively even in the first period. And there's the skyhook. 17 for Abdul-Jabbar. Back now up they to have a 12 point on, uh, James Worthy. Thompson gets it back quickly to Portland. Michael Thompson. 18 points for Michael Thompson. 5.25 to go. Rebound for Drexler. Valentine is calling a foul on Scott. Valentine to go to the free throw line and for the first time in four and five playoff games, the Lakers are having to play their key personnel at this stage of the fourth period. Usually they were looking at uh, players like Chuck Nevitt and that's what you got Ronnie Lester. Hey, that's what you got him for. You know, it'd be nice if, you, if they could be resting, but... Um Valentine with only five points in the contest. Cuts it to a nine-point Laker lead. And it's an eight-point lead with 5.15 to go. The Lakers have seen their lead dwindle down to six at one point during that third period. Kiki Vandeweghe will be coming back in on the next dead ball. Shot clock is down to seven. Turnover, Lakers. Ball on two breaks. Drexler draws the foul. Another foul on Byron Scott. That's four fouls against Scott. The pass there just thrown away. There goes Drexler. And there's the foul. Chance to cut it to six-point lead. And the last time that the Blazers were there was with three minutes left in the third period. Drexler has come alive with two 15 points. They're all in the, all in the second half. And he's back to guard Magic again, too. Which... Mandaway is on Abdul Jabbar. And he can't get it to drop. Thompson to Drexler. Take it home, Clyde. point Laker lead 17 for Drexler 422 to go in the ball game Jabbar battling inside foul call Michael Thompson and now those fouls are starting to add up on both teams and they become essential because some of these players are so important that they that the coaches have them going down the stretch and Michael Thompson is very important in this trailblazer team. He's, Michael has 18 points, but you see four fouls as Abdul Jabbar not able to get that one to drop. He's five for seven from the line tonight. Portland, 
surprisingly, has scored 34 points off of the breaks tonight, only 24 points for the Lakers. So they've done a very good job in containing the fast break, and they're right in the ball game, trailing by six with 4.10 to go. Carr! He only has four points in the ball game, but it's a four-point Laker lead. Timeout, Lakers. early in the second quarter. 3.45 to go in the ball game. Portland with the last to Jeffrey. The skyhook comes through again. 20 for Abdul-Jabbar. LA now 4 for 10 on inside opportunities. Portland 6 for 8 in this period. The Lakers were 3 for 10 before that last shot. And Jabbar with the block. Foul inside going to be on McAdoo. Third personal on McAdoo. Portland is 7 for 12 so far in this quarter for 58%. Carr now with 9 points. There's the foul problems for both ball clubs. Bowie and Carr in the most serious difficulty. Carr with his 10th point. And from the rest of the game now, unless it's from rare occasions, both teams, the, the team that wins this game will, one, will be the one that executes a half-court offense the best because the fast breaks, uh, they're guarding against those. Shot too well now. Eight. The skyhook again. That's half-court offense. The best. 22 for Abdul-Jabbar. Six-point lead. Three minutes to go in the game. Michael Thompson with a tough shot. McAdoo with a big they rebound. come up with a shot that tough. Again, they went right to the first opportunity. It was not a good one. They didn't make the Lakers play the defense Bill talked about. Magic off balance. Thompson with the rebound. Three on two break for Portland. Paxson. Drexler keeps it alive. Magic is over the back. Only the second foul for Magic. But more importantly, Portland gets to the free throw line as Jack Ramsey trying to find a way to get a victory out of his ball club over this Los Angeles team that has been so dominant since February, playing 35 and four balls, 36 and four since that time. And here's a young man doing everything he can to help him out in that effort. Having a tough time at the free throw line. Drexler has 18 points. All in the second half. 2.25 to go in the game. Five-point Laker lead. Worthy back in. He's played so well. Draws the foul. Count it. James Worthy, 27 points. And again, he initiated the contact as Kenny Carr fouls out of the ball game. And that's a, a much more costly, can be a much more costly foul than it would appear from Kenny Carr's numbers because he's one of the guys out there that was able to physically play hard-nosed with his Lakers. That brings Sam Bowie into the game, who is also in foul trouble with five. Worthy with 28 points. And so far, the Lakers have been up to holding the trailblazers up. They've made four or five real strong runs at him, and they've got it down to five, but... They got it to four, actually, at one point. They were at four two times, and now they're up to eight. We've got two minutes to go in the game. Vandaway off balance. It's going to be a foul on Michael Thompson, I believe, pushing well, off against the Jabbar. That's not to come up with, with those circumstances. Well, again, Bill, you said it's a team that's going to execute their half-court offense. Well, and Portland has not done that. They have not taken good shots. They have tried to force the ball inside. Here's a perfect example of it. Now, look at Kiki as he gets inside. Here's the defense, and drifting to the right. Very difficult shot in that instance. Almost impossible. Well, not for a player like Kiki, but not exactly the high percentage shot. And Kareem, who had been silent for a great portion of the game since the first quarter, now has 23 points as he's come through with several big shots down the stretch. Mostly Skyhooks. Three of them to be exact. 
and he has 24 points. Jack Ramsey takes a 20-second timeout. His team has gone from a four-point deficit quickly to 10 with 1.56 to go. And it's like the old adage, Bill, as you're kind of in that hole and you try and crawl your way out, as you can see, they've never been swept in a playoff series. You're in that hole and you dig your way, you dig your way to the top, and all of a sudden the dirt gives way and you fall back down again. You can't quite seem to get out of it. Well, it happens all the time. You get so far behind and you pull up to a place where you say... Well, we got here. And then you slide back. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's then you got to make another one, and it's twice as hard, plus the fact you have half as much time. Well, Pat Riley, Dave Wall is assistant looking on, and whatever he's telling his team, it's working quite well. But this is the first time that they have actually been pressed in any ball game. They swept the Suns, remember, three to nothing, dominating that series, dominating the first two games of this one. But they've been put to the task here tonight, and they've come through admirably, but we still have 155 to go. And the further they go in the uh, playoffs, the better the teams will be able to press them and to make them have to play down the stretch. There's a good play. Trexler on the penetration, and Bowie takes it home. Pat calling out the offensive play that he'd like to have run. Two down. Cooper's going to be back in for the Lakers in the next dead ball. And the jump switch that was banned away. Shot clock inside of 10 for the Lakers. 1.30 to go in the game. Drexler comes away with it. Coulter, who's just come back into the ball game. The Drexler, three-pointer, gets it back to Coulter. Three-pointer. Thompson. Michael Thompson now with 20 points. Back to a six-point Laker lead. 1.05 to go in the game. Still a chance. Dave Clark is popping the screen. Portland needs two good defensive efforts. There's one of them. It's going to be a foul against Jabbar. Cooper's in now. Four fouls on Kareem, as you see. Scott missed and Kareem as he hooked with the left arm and knocked Bowie down. We'll see another angle as Bowie battles for position. Watch Kareem's left arm. There he is. Again, he really didn't do much hooking. It was a good acting job on the part of Bowie. A little bit of Hollywood from the Lakers rubbing off on Sam. Well, actually, Kareem is much stronger than he may appear to be. Audie I Norris. I think that uh, Sam has done a lot of weightlifting yet. Audie Norris back into the ball game. Clyde Drexler has... Uh, as Vandaway gets a rest, he goes to the bench with... 25 points. Bowie's had a tough time at the line tonight. That's a big one. 48 seconds to go in the game. It's a five-point Laker lead. Bowie's now 5 for 11 from the free throw line. They hit the two big ones. And again, they need the defensive effort. They're actually going to need two more. <laughs> Lakers almost looks like the four-corner offense of the North Carolina Tar Heels. Shot clock to six. Kareem. Super move by Michael Cooper. Drawing all the defense and dropping off to the big guy. And almost had a dunk shot. Well, they, Norris. they did the right thing because now he's got to make two free throws. Norris with the foul. Cooper with the penetration to Kareem and Norris over there with the foul. Because if he doesn't make both of them, the three-pointer looms very large. And now Vandeweghe comes back in. Valentine goes to the bench. They bring Vandeweghe in, of course, for his offensive capabilities here. Five-point lead for the Lakers. 28 seconds to go. There are Kareem's numbers. And it's a six-point lead as Portland takes a timeout with 28 seconds to go. They trail the Lakers by six, but there's still a chance with a three-point play. back with Bill Russell the final 28 seconds and Bill trailing by 6 128 to 122 I would assume that you Portland will go for the three-point shot they need two they need a three-point a shutout they'll have to make a score and another three-point well, that's what it boils down to and of course those little plays those little mistakes throughout the course of this game that Portland 
came up with to come back to haunt them as they're able to finally press the Lakers here in their first effort at home. But they still have come up short, and they could very well fall behind. Three games to nothing. Michael Thompson is in for Bowie. They need to get it up fairly quickly, and they're taking a lot of time. Drexler, they go inside. Bandaway takes it home. The four-point game, 18 seconds to go. Full court pressure. They should foul somebody. The clock's just ticking away the game. They've got to foul somebody. Now they're not doing anything on the ball. The Lakers foul. doing a good That's job. That's the wrong man finally. to foul there. With five seconds. Excuse me, Rick. But he, uh, Barry Scott, uh, good free throw shooter. They pass it. I think two. Uh, the best free throw shooter they have on the floor right now. Because he pulled the trigger a couple of times in the last quarter and came up empty. So he'd like to make these two free throws. But you know, it's really funny. I, I think you'd agree. Now, he's at the foul line, and this could really just put an end to it. And he's probably not thinking about the significance, but he's probably thinking about the execution. Okay, but, but yeah, that's probably true. But why in the world did Portland not foul the first guy that touched the ball? Go for the steal. If you don't have it, foul the first man who touches the ball to use the clock as an ally. Well, the Lakers did something real smart, though, Rick. They passed the ball pretty well. And you see, you don't want to just make uh, They should have fouled him. Okay, thank you. I was going to wait to see what you said because I was going to disagree with whoever it was. Hey, I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, Rick. Okay. And I painted myself in the corner. Thank you. The only way out is to say they should have fouled It takes a six foot nine man to admit it. <laughs> As Byron Scott puts another nail into that coffin of the Portland Trailblazers. Now it's a six point lead for the Lakers. And it's a timeout for Portland. All of that time that ticked away on the clock as you look at Michael Thompson, who has 20 points in tonight's ball game. A great job off of the bench for Portland. Uh, they uh, just don't have the, the horses to get the job done. They, they you have to admire, though, the effort that they put forth, Bill. Well, you think I think about looking at uh, Clyde Drexler. He gets shut out scoring in the uh, first half. and uh, Came back with a triple-double. Triple. Right. Yes, he did. 13 assists, 11 rebounds. And, and he came up with all those points. As we want to remind you that playoff action, the Super Shootout, continues here on the Superstation. Sunday, Bill and I will be journeying to Salt Lake City to bring you the Nuggets and the Jazz in Game 4 of that semifinal series. Of course, the Nuggets leading it 2 to nothing. They play on Saturday in Game 3. 10.05 p.m. Eastern Time, 8.05 p.m. Mountain Time. We hope you'll join us for all of the action in that one. We hope you were with us for the first game. Philadelphia coming up victorious for three straight games against the Milwaukee Bucks. And here tonight, it looks like the Lakers are going to run out to a 3 to nothing lead against Portland. And, of course, they swept the Suns 3 to nothing. You see the story. Five seconds remaining. The Lakers 130. The Blazers 124. By far the best effort that any team has put forth against the Lakers thus far in the playoffs. But the Lakers continuing their domination are now at the end of this ball game, which looks like it will be victorious for them, will be 37 and 4 since February the 1st. And I don't know of any other team other than that Laker team that went 33 and 0 that Jerry West still thinks was a better ball club uh, that's played any better was in the stretch. What do you think? Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, if I asked you what was the best Celtic team ever, I doubt very seriously if you tell me a team that you were not. No, I wouldn't tell you anything Thank you like very that. very much. <laughs> I wouldn't even think about anything like that. Okay, so Portland now with only five seconds left after letting 13 seconds tick away on the clock when they could have committed the foul. will have almost no chance at all. They'll get an easy two. Paxson drives in two seconds to go. Now they got to come up with a real quick foul as soon as it comes in bounds. No, it's too late. Again, they don't even get the foul off. They have lost again. The Lakers lead the series. Three games to none as the Lakers score 130 and the Blazers only 126. We'll be back in just a moment.